everyone. Welcome back to Deep Dive. This is episode number 12. And today I'd like to continue talking about how I would memorize a piece uh, to the point where I would be able to play something by memory successfully in a concert. So last week we talked about taking the piece and really dividing them into sections then looking at one section at a time, um, perhaps it's a very small passage, and finding patterns, different ways you would um, analyze that little section to um, allow yourself to understand the ins and outs of that phrase, and most importantly, um, think about what it means, the emotional content of that uh, phrase in order to um, express the music. But this week, um, I'd like to talk about um, what happens once that process has taken place. So after you've analyzed all the little different sections, how do they come together again um, to a big piece, to a long story that you can present in front of an audience? Memorization is tough because you can't um, halfway memorize something and try to pull it off in the concert. There's any number of things that could go wrong, of course, and it could be the smallest detail that might, might make the entire uh, architecture just crumble. So we need to really link these different phrases and sections really well in our memory so they are secure and um, wonderfully interwoven in our memory before we go on stage. So let's continue. Here we go. Today's first example comes from Chopin's Andante Spianato. This is a beautiful melody and accompaniment piece, and there is a melody that repeats itself a number of different times. I've chosen this example because I think when you're memorizing a piece that has a component that keeps uh, reiterating itself, it can be uh, very tricky uh, in the concert because they just all start sounding alike and you might lose your place. So in this example, there is a melody that uh, repeats itself four different times. Twice before the key change and twice after the key change. The melody goes like this. And second time, it starts off the same. There it's a little different. So instead of we have so this F sharp is new, so and that's something I would mark in my, my memory. Instead of, instead of coming down, we have this lovely little spin. I always think of these um, figure skaters when they do like a double axle or triple axle. So there is a bit of that, that spin there. And then instead of just, that's first time, we have second time. There's just that additional C. Instead of one, two, we have one, two, three. That C insists a little bit more. And I remember that in my memory because um, this is right before the key change. And I feel like this extra C, it's sort of like a child saying, I don't want to leave the playground. Just wants to stay on that C a little bit more which makes and then 
the piece just moves to a different key. So I tell myself right there that, um, that there is that insistence on C because we have to leave the original key. So after that E minor section, uh, this opening figure comes back. second time so far. So now there's that spin here again the third time. It's a little bit more fancy. Chopin has added um, two more notes. So instead of we have a little bit more in the beginning. So it's, it's similar but there's just that small difference that lets us know that each time it's getting a little bit more complicated or a little bit more embellished. That's new for the first time and I, I remember hearing that when I first came across this piece and I thought that was just a very special little bit so that, that sort of stuck out to me. Um, from the very first time I played this piece and I've always stored that in my melody um, that melody in my mind as the third time that it presents itself toward the end that lovely little turn and then here's fourth time so instead of there is a New notes here. It's sort of giving us that idea that it's getting more complicated. And then here's the most fancy figure. This always has worried me in the concert. It sort of um, has too many notes for the amount of time that we have here but um, it has to be just this elegant turn. If that was a double axle before, now we have a triple axle, triple loop, whatever you want to call it, this. So it's all sort of going toward the fourth time, which blooms. This is an outcry. reaction to this triple loop in my mind. So I have married those two figures together. So as you can see, this uh, very similar figure um, repeats itself four different times and each time it's um, embellished a little bit more and it's important to keep all the little details in your mind very clearly and hang on to these changes and to make it really personal um, for you in order to um, take this journey and have a peace of mind and not worry that you're going to be playing the same phrase over and over more than four times or less than four times. So just like the example I just showed you, Chopin loves to bring back um, the original melody in a slightly more embellished form in other pieces as well. Uh, the piece, Chopin's second piano concerto, in the, in the slow movement, it has this gorgeous melody, uh, but it comes back three different times and um, it changes a lot each time. And I'm just starting to learn it and it was hard for me to keep track of the little details that are changing each time. So I wanted to show you this little arts and crafts project that I like to do when I have to remember certain details um, very well. And sometimes it's just dozens and dozens of different pages that I need to um, compare and it gets very taxing just flipping back and forth. So I sometimes do a cut and paste uh, project with uh, scotch tape but this is very effective so you can't see very well it's very small I know but uh, there is a section that repeats three times so here's the first time and here's the second time and then here's the third time so I have these 
um, in front of me when I'm learning, probably more like this, one, two, three, and I've cut and pasted it. So the lines, um, the first lines are the same. So they're sort of theme and two variations in a way, and they all sort of, um, they can, they really correlate. Um, each line is uh, the same harmonics and Chopin is really uh, embellishing on this initial melody. You can see it's much shorter and then there are many more notes here and these two, when it reiterates, it looks more similar, you know, all these squigglies going up and down. So this is what I like to do to really keep track of every melody and when I really look at it closely, I'm planning to perform this next year. I will um, really circle and uh, try to look at every single detail so I know exactly how it changes each time. My past concerts have taught me that when it's time to perform, the piece feels different from the way it felt in the practice room when I was playing it for myself without an audience. It makes sense, but I never really know how it's going to change if I haven't performed it. Certain pieces seem to go by much quicker. Certain pieces seem to last forever. Certain climaxes arrive earlier. Certain things become much more difficult and certain things easy, thank goodness. But uh, to give myself a bit of sanity, I like to prepare certain sections with some pivot chords or labels or sticky notes in mind. So when I'm playing a certain passage, I know exactly where it is on the journey, um, even if it feels a little bit um, new in my system. And there's a passage in Schumann's Carnival uh, where Schumann really uh, starts the sentence over twice. He loves to do this. He gives you a melody and it goes a little bit in this direction once, and then he just starts again, and then second time it goes in the other direction. And um, so it's, it's almost like hearing something on a small loop. It could be problematic um, when you're playing it um, with a whole bunch of other musicians or an orchestra. Of course, this is a solo piece, but I'm, I'm playing this with, um, with a dance company for a project, so it's, it's very important that I do this loop correctly. And I wanted to give you this example because it seems so small, but um, I figured out in the past that it could really um, feel very strange in the concert if I don't put that exact label on it. don't go to this G flat. So where is that G flat? Here's the G flat. So if I don't go there the first time, this whole section you just heard will just disappear and I will move on to the material that comes after this section. So I have to remember that um, I have the number one sort of tattooed to this G flat uh, in order to do this loop correctly. G flat. Later, this same figure, instead of going to G flat, just stays on G natural. to a totally new section. So I must remember that that exists there because it goes so against the current and so much of Schumann's music is that way. We are ping-ponging between two different energy levels. So when you uh, change teams in a way and um, that new character pops out, it feels um, like I'm uh, sort of at a loss for words. A little bit I'm surprised myself as a performer. And this G flat, if I don't really think about it, I might miss it very easily. So that's one of the things um, in memorization that it seems just like, what's a big deal? It's just one note. 
but it, this could really make or break the, this entire section and could um, the rest of the piece, 25 minutes from this point on, might crumble if I don't uh, reach that correctly. So little details like this I have to really pay attention to um, make a successful concert happen. Even if I practice a lot and memorize very efficiently before a concert, accidents could happen. So rather than worrying about it, I like to give myself that uh, worst case scenario and make sure I can swim out of it, come out of that moment and get back on track. And I think the way to do that is, um, of course, making that, um, that memory very clear in that crucial spot. But in case that spot goes wrong, you have to make sure what comes right after it is very clear in your mind. So in this section, in Greek's Piano Concerto, first movement, there are two moments that are very similar. Um, this moment has two sections, part one and part two. And um, so each of these sections have these part one and part two. And part one in both sections are the same. Part twos of both sections go different ways. So as a performer, you have to remember, first time you go this way, second time you go this way. And even if um, that is some, in a way, very simple thing to remember, in the concert, you could get confused and take that wrong turn and it could be costly. So um, I'll show you where it is. <laughs> section so that happens both times and then first time it goes here so um, it ends up in an E flat on the right hand so and then second time it happens So even if I mix those two, I have to remember if the accident occurs um, and I switch them around, I quickly have to switch them again. <laughs> so I can end up in the right direction because the, what comes after that will di dictate the journey onward. So um, it will be very uncomfortable, but um, just a few times I like to go over that in my head or just um, solidify um, what comes after. So the first time I would remember it's E flat. Second time it's C. So these two schemes, of course, come out of what came um, before, but they should really stand on its own in your memory. So in case um, the the first part gets um, all mixed up, you can land on these and continue the journey forward. I think the secret to uh, memorizing a piece well is to really look at each note from different angles. I think um, left hand, which might be in the background, could be as important as the melody that's being played with uh, the right hand because they're, when you're playing them together by memory, the smallest note in the left hand could really get in the way of the right hand um, singing that melody. So for example, going back to the Chopin example, so it starts this way, left hand isn't changing, it's a pattern of four, and then the right hand enters, sharp the left hand's pattern starts to change and I think it's important to note that and when you're practicing the left hand alone um, really make sure that the change happens with that note in the right hand and you start sort of marrying that kind of um, different patterns changing together so um, you are aware of everything that's changing um, even in the lines that seems not so important in the practice room but on concert stage, every single note you play will gain sort of a new life form. And you not only have to um, 
know the notes as just accompaniment. It's like knowing someone as so-and-so's mom. That person has different entity too. That could be, a uh, person could be someone's daughter, someone's best friend. And this, this, these notes um, become something more significant on stage. So this is a very um, sort of a simple context, but some, they're very complicated, multi-lines, many, many different patterns like <laughs> different patterns and uh, things that go against the pattern. I'll be here all night if I try to explain to you all that's going through my head, although I'm only hanging on to the pivot notes when I perform it. Um, passage like that also needs the same process of all the different lines um, interacting um, on their own, not all together. When you're pr practicing it and memorizing it, you have to take it apart to the simplest lines, understand them alone, and then put them layered one after another to um, realize how they're interacting with each other to build um, a multi-line performance successfully. If I could give some more advice on memorization, it's that um, you must always look at the surrounding notes around the section you have most problem with. I think when you really focus in on certain sections and try to get all the little parts of it and absorb it, um, that part will just um, really seep through your system over time. But um, my worry is that the notes surrounding it surrounding that problem spot will get less attention. And those are usually the, the notes that, um, that become problematic in the concerts. Uh, so I remember sometimes when I'm so concerned about certain section, uh, I am thinking about that nonstop. So the section leading up to it um, gets, gets no attention whatsoever and I didn't even get to my problematic spot before I started to have problems and then there was no way I could nail what I've been working so hard for. So make sure uh, you pay attention to every single um, passage, whether it's um, difficult or not difficult, because um, what will give you problem in the concert are the notes you did not think about. If you give attention to it, they will gain personality, emotional content, and you would be able to produce them and remember that, that journey that you've practiced. But as soon as there's that empty, that hole uh, in your memory, that gap, it could really um, become this much bigger unknown that could spill over to other sections that you knew really well. So um, my advice is to really look at every single note and um, consider them uh, little friends. Don't leave anyone behind and get to know all the sounds as if it's, um, it's just part of a much bigger puzzle that makes it what it is. So thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful and I hope uh, you take on that challenge and try to memorize a piece of music. See you next week.